guess that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. I've been waiting all week on for Sunday to come so I can sing my song. Have a little church and do our thing. I can do the Sunday school swing. Yeah, yeah. Sunday school swing. All right. Charge of the bad love, Jericho. 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 Charge of the bad love, Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. Charge of the bad love, Jericho. Jericho. Jericho, Joshua bought the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling, tumbling down. I've been waiting all week on for Sunday to come so I can sing my song, have a little church and do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. Sunday school swing He's got the whole world in his hands 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 Good morning, GCC kids, and welcome back to Sunday School. I'm Miss Katie, and if you're here joining us today, be sure to pop over to the chat feed and say hello. Well, I hope your school year is ending up so great. You have almost made it. You're getting so close, and I'm so proud of you. Many of you have been doing homeschooling at home, and congratulations to your parents who've been helping you and your brothers and sisters who've been cooperating while you've been taking uh, your classes at home. It's been an amazing year, and I bet you've accomplished so many things you never knew possible. I'm so proud of you. Well, I'd love to practice our Bible memory verse now with you from Ephesians 2, verse 19b and 20. Ephesians 2, 19b, 20. Ephesians 2, 19b, 20. You are no longer strangers. You are members of his household. of the apostles and prophets you are no longer strangers you are members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with christ jesus himself as the chief cornerstone with christ jesus himself as the chief cornerstone you are no longer strangers, you are members of his house. 
chief cornerstone. We're so excited to see you all here with us today. So for our question of the day today, we want you to think about, can you name something that needs a firm foundation? So something that requires a firm foundation. So you still have some time to think about that. Uh, let us know your answer here at the end of our time today. And we'll share what our answers are as well. So do you remember the name of the person we've been talking about for a lot of weeks now? His name starts with a P. It's not Peter. Paul. Paul yeah. That's right. So Paul, as we know, wrote a lot of the letters that are in the New Testament of our Bible. And a lot of those letters were for Paul encouraging and teaching other churches about Jesus and about the gospel. Now, before we go further into our lesson, I have a game I want to play with Jason. So you can do this with somebody in your home or maybe you can just watch us to see what we're doing too. You might have played this before. I'm gonna put my hands on top of yours. So one person is gonna have their hands out like this, palms facing up, and the other person is going to put their hands not on top of them, but just hovering over top. So anytime you're ready, what Jason's going to do, if you have your palms up, you're gonna to try to tap the top of my hands and I have to try to pull away to make sure you don't tap Got it. my hands. Got it. Ready? Yeah. Oh, oh I got that one. <laughs> All right, try again. Oh, <laughs> man, that was a good one. All right, now we're tied. Right, so let's flip it. Switch so it. So I'm going to put my hands at the bottom got and Jason it. can put his hands up top. Are you ready? For the tiebreaker. Oh, <laughs> man. One more time. Are you ready? Yeah. Ow. <laughs> Ah, I got that time. So you might have done this before. This is a really good way to know that you sometimes have to be ready. You know, 
we can't be ready all the time, but in this game, you really have to pay attention and figure out when is your partner gonna go. You saw that I kind of tripped Jason up a little bit, but if you weren't ready, you would get caught every single time. And this actually brings us to our story point today, is that Paul told the church to stand firm as we wait for Jesus's return. It might be pretty, you know, upsetting and a lot of people are very impatient with knowing when is Jesus going to return. But if we just have to be ready, we have to know that Jesus is in our heart and we just have to wait for him. So what does it mean to stand firm? Have you ever heard about that song about the wise man built his house upon the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand? And what happened? The floods or the rains came down and the floods came, came up, up and the house on the sand went splat. But the house on the rock stood firm. So that's why it's so important to have a firm foundation in Jesus. Let's take a look at our video and learn more about our lesson today. About 20 years after Jesus died on the cross and rose again, Paul traveled to the city of Thessalonica. The people there worshipped idols. Some of them even worshipped the Roman Emperor. Paul told the people the good news about Jesus, and many people believed in Jesus. Paul started the church in Thessalonica, but some people did not like Paul or his teachings and they forced him out of the city. Paul worried about the people in Thessalonica. They had not been believers for very long. So Paul sent his friend Timothy to see how they were doing. Timothy brought back good news. Even though the Thessalonians faced suffering for their faith, they did not give up. Paul wrote a letter to encourage the believers. He told them that Jesus will return someday. On that day, Paul said, believers will no longer suffer. This message gave them great hope. Paul wrote to help the believers in Thessalonica know what is true and to teach them what happened to friends who had died. Believers can grieve with hope because Jesus died and rose again. God would bring with him those who had died if they trusted in Jesus. On the day that Jesus returns, the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout. Those believers who have died will be raised to life first. Then believers who are still alive will be raised up together to meet the Lord. We will live with him forever. No one knows when Jesus will come again. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night when you do not expect it. So be ready. God has promised us eternal life. He has saved us through his son, Jesus. Whether we are alive or dead, when Jesus returns, he will bring us all home with him forever. So continue to encourage each other because we have this future hope. The prophets in the Old Testament told about the day of the Lord, a day when God would come to judge the world and save his people. Paul said that in the future, on the day of the Lord, Jesus will return for his people and judge the wicked. Believers live with hope, knowing that Jesus will come again. We need to be ready for Jesus' return. We need to trust in Jesus with our lives and tell others about the Bible. So that brings us to our big picture question. Our big picture question is, what is the Bible about? The Bible is the story of God's plan to save people through Jesus. Do you remember what our question of the day was? It was, can you name something that has a firm foundation? So Jason, can you name something that has a firm foundation? I know the times that I need to uh, make sure there's a firm foundation is our playing blocks with our nephews and uh, nieces. That's true. That we like making these big towers, but obviously you gotta make sure that strong base at the bottom or else the whole tower is gonna fall straight over. One thing that I think of is, have you ever seen people do a pyramid? Sometimes cheerleaders do this at like a basketball or a football game. You need to have a lot of people at the bottom so that you have a firm foundation or the person up top would just fall down. 
You might even see firm foundations for houses, different buildings, and that's why we say we need a firm foundation in Jesus is because we need to stay heavy on a rock like the wise man. Yeah, absolutely. So let us know in your comments uh, here what you thought you might be an example of something that might be a firm foundation or maybe how you might use it in your everyday life. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. But as always, we greatly appreciate you tuning in um, and spending time with us each week. And we can't wait to see you again next week. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Kevin from Bridgeport, Connecticut asks, When will Jesus come back? What's taking so long? Kevin, that is a fantastic question that the church has been asking for 2,000 years. You know, if you look at even Paul's letters, look at what he wrote to the church in 1 Thessalonians. He was anticipating Jesus' return almost as if it was soon. And a lot of the early leaders in the church, if you read some of the old church fathers, they're called, who would write to the church early on, they all had this sense that Jesus could return at any time. And so we've been asking this question for 2,000 years now. When will he return? Why does it feel like it's taking so long? Well, the first part of that is this. We don't know when Jesus will return. He told us as much. He says no one is going to know when he'll return. It will happen suddenly uh, in the blink of an eye. He will just return. Now, we do know when he does return, everybody will know. It will not be this secret, this mystery. Uh, you will know. I will know when Jesus returns. So what is taking him so long? Yeah, there are a lot of days that I just really wish Jesus would return right now. When we think about sin in the world, when we think about hardship and pain and suffering, and we know that when Jesus returns, all that will end, man, it is right and it's fitting for us to really want Jesus to return right now, uh, to be desperate for it. But at the same time, we know he is not returning yet because it's not the right time, because he's waiting for people to trust in him. Every day that goes by is a day that people have the opportunity to hear the gospel, to believe in Jesus, and repent of their sin and believe in him so that they can be saved too, so that when he does return, they spend eternity in heaven with him rather than eternity apart from him. So we need to live every day with urgency and with purpose, recognizing that we can tell our friends, our neighbors, our family about Jesus so they can believe in him and celebrate with us when Jesus returns. So here's a question back for you. What do you think will be the best part about Jesus' return?
Jesus, none but Jesus.